three, two, one. They're pioneers. Haley Arsenault, Chris Sembrowski, Cyan Proctor, and Jarrett Isaacman. Mission and liftoff. About to go where civilians have never ventured on their own until now. Later this year, you're going to make history. How does that feel? Amazing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right? Who's answering? <laughs> I mean, is it real yet? It is real. I think it's sunk in. But I think if you had asked us a couple months ago, none of us would have felt we'd be here. But here they are, just months from the world's first all-civilian space mission. Yeah, it's just overwhelming and mind-blowing. Later this year, these four will board a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, rocket skyward, and spend three days in low Earth orbit. You're opening space to regular people. Incredible. Yeah, I, I mean, there's going to be a world where, like, this is totally routine. So, you know, we got to get it right. Jared Isaacman, adventurer, aviator, billionaire founder of an online payment processing company, and now commander of the Inspiration4 mission. Are you concerned about a lack of experience? I know we will be ready when we get to, to the launch. I've looked at the training curriculum. We just need to make our way through it over the next five months. Control of the craft will be mostly automated, as it always is. But for a space fanatic like Jared, it's a dream come true and a chance to do good. He paid for the mission, and he's using it to raise money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital through fundraisers, school programs, and special events. He even donated $100 million of his own. We got to deal with a real problem today, and you know, solving childhood cancer seems to be top of my list right now. I can't even imagine what to expect. Haley works as a physician assistant at St. Jude. She was treated there years ago for bone cancer. Part of her left femur was removed. You'll be the first person with a prosthesis in space. Do you feel a certain responsibility to roll perfectly? Absolutely. When we're opening the door up, for space travel to everyone, we're truly opening up to those like myself who aren't physically perfect. But are you nervous? I'm not nervous at all. Neither is Chris. He's a dog lover, a dad, and an Iraq war veteran. I wonder if there are points in the day that pops into your head, whoop, I'm getting on a rocket. I don't think that thought ever leaves my head. You're brushing your teeth, you're thinking about how is this gonna be different in space? Cyan, like the others, is training. Years ago, she almost made the cut to be a NASA astronaut. Now, she's a geoscience professor. Space is risky. Cyan, from a science perspective, risky. SpaceX has done an amazing job of lowering that risk factor. I feel like I've been, to some extent, training my entire life for this. I spoke with the crew at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, surrounded by space history. How will you look back on this moment? I am a true believer in the, uh, in the SpaceX vision. The world is fundamentally more interesting when people can go and explore among the stars. So I just feel like our role is just a kind of a small contribution towards that bigger plan. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.